Shalom, shalom to all of you and uh, wishing you the shalom of the most high. Um, so we're going to get started. It, this is not going to be such a long teaching, um, but I was kind of feeling in my Ruach that that uh, this needs to be addressed because we're getting ready for the second exodus and it's very, very close. And so let's just begin with prayer because we love our Abba. Abba Yahuwah, we thank you for your goodness. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for blessing us. Thank you for pouring out your favor on us. Thank you for wisdom. And thank you for awakening us, Father. And Father, as we are praying, we pray for our entire family, our entire family to be awakened to Teshuvah, and to return to you and return to your covenant or, and obey your laws, commands, and statutes, Abba, we pray that none of our families will be left behind. Father, do a work in them as only you can do. No words that we could say can can uh, get the attention of all of them, but you know just how to get the attention so get their attention so that all of our family members will be saved. Thank you, Father. And we ask in Yahusha's mighty name, so be it. Hallelujah. All right. So uh, we're gonna get started. This uh is going to be a different uh, a different lesson and uh and and because um, because uh, I uh, have been uh, dealing with a pinched nerve in my neck, and then uh, uh, and then therapy, and so I'm a little sore. And so we're going to just do um, we're just going to do um, we're going to do a short little lesson. And then we are going to, to show you uh, a slide from a prophetess. And I believe in my heart that she is a true prophetess. Uh, and she has some information about the uh, timelines that are going to, to occur before our exodus. So our, our uh, topic uh, today is the second exodus. The end of our captivity is near. And so get ready, Yasharal, and be prepared. Now, I know that uh, some might say, well, I'm not, in a, I'm not in a captivity. I got a big house on the hill. I drive this and I drive that's luxury and I got a good job. But things are deteriorating. No matter how well you are situated now, it is not going to remain. So, uh, and then... Um, as the prophet said, that um, uh, uh, states that if you don't want to go, then you are not going. So make sure that your heart is prepared also. Not only are we going to be physically prepared, but we should, our hearts should be prepared before our wonderful, wonderful father. Okay. So uh, quick names and terminology, not going to go into detail because I don't have but a few slides, but I do want to show you uh, a video that this uh, 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 young lady, I would assume, or lady um, uh, has posted. Okay, so Yahuwah Elohai is Yahuwah my God and, and Halika. We hadn't been putting that on the past um, of videos, but Halika is the way of Yahuwah. So he wants us to not only to shuva and repent, but to walk in his ways and obey his commands and laws. And of course, God and laws, are Lord, are titles which can be attributed to other gods. 
usually uh, Lord is for Baal. And uh, I, I do think the translators uh, disrespected Yahuwah's name by just inserting God and, and Lord because uh, the translators uh, worship the sun God. The translators who are the Catholics, they worship the sun God. So when we say God, it could refer to that, you know, but it's all according to what's in your heart. And uh, Exodus 3, and Elohim said unto Moshe, uh, Ahaya, Ashe, Ahaya, I am that I am. And he said, thus shall you say unto the children of Yasharal, I am have sent me unto you. And Elohim said, moreover unto Moshe, thus shall you say unto the children of Yasharal, uh, Yahuwah Elohai, of your fathers, the Elohai of Abraham, the Elohai of Isaac, and the Elohai of Yaakov has sent me unto you. This is my name forever, and this is my memorial unto all generations. So let's be sure to try to honor him through the name that he gave himself. And he has made us, he has made his name uh, available to us because don't, uh, don't forget the name Yahuwah is a strong town and the righteous run into it and they are safe. So that name is a mighty name. So we want to honor him by calling him uh, by his name Yahuwah. All right, so uh, in John 4 and 22, it says that salvation is of, and I sliced out the Jews because we are not Jews, we are Hebrews. Salvation is of Yasharel. We are the seed of Yaakov, or Jacob. And the Bible was written about Yahuwah's chosen people, the seed of Avraham, Yishak, and Yaakov. It's written about us. It's written for us. It's written to us. It has very often been erroneously interpreted by the Gentiles who wanted the narrative to be about them. The books of the Bible, including the apocryphal books, are our Black history books. We are not Jews. As I said, we are Israelites. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are the chosen ones. All right, now I'm going to just talk a little bit, a few minutes about history repeats itself with a twist. And we're talking about the first Exodus. In Exodus 6, starting with verse 2, it reads, And Elohim spake unto Moshe and said unto him, I am Yahuwah. And I appeared up unto Abraham, unto Yeshah, and unto Yaakov by the name of El Shaddai, which is translated God Almighty. But by my name, Yahuwah, was I not known to them. And I have also established my covenant with them to give them the land of Canaan, the land of their pilgrimage, wherein they were strangers. And I have also heard the groaning of the children of Yasharal, whom the Egyptians keep in bondage. And I have remembered my covenant. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Wherefore, say unto the children of Yasharal, I am Yahuwah, and I will bring you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians, and I will rid you out of their bondage, and I will redeem you with a stretched out arm and with great judgments. Now, this is the same thing that's going to happen shortly. We are right on the uh, precipice of our exodus. We really are. So uh, so uh, the history is repeating itself, but with a twist. Uh, exodus 6, continue reading uh, verse 7. I will take you to me 
for a people. This is Yah, uh, Yahuwah's talking, speaking, and uh, to Moshe. And I will take you to to me for a people, and I will be to you an Elohim, and you shall know that I am Yahuwah, your Elohim, which brings you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians. Now I will bring you into in unto the land concerning the uh, the which I did swear to give it to Abraham to Yitzhak and Yaakov and I will give it you for a heritage. I am Yahuwah. And Moshe spoke so unto the children of Yasharel, but they hearken not unto Moshe for anguish of spirit and for cruel bondage. Now, the twist is that many Hebrews here in this Babylon, in this wicked nation, uh, are stuck on the lies that we were taught and the lies that brainwashed us by our enemies, the Gentiles. And so they're stuck on the quote unquote church. They're stuck in the Christianity, which is pagan. And I've gone over the pagan holidays in previous teachings, but uh, they're still stuck in it. And uh, and I have, and as, as I am observing, uh, even though my husband and I were pastors in Christianity, and uh, but I am observing in Christianity, the focus is always on the pastor instead of on our loving father who deserves the honor, who deserves the praise, who deserves to be exalted. And that is a fallacy of Christianity and uh, how things are, are run in the uh, so-called church which is translated from a word uh, uh, circa, uh, which means circus. So we do, we do, we did used to get in there and we did um, uh, act like a circus with all that we did in, instead of just being taught Yah's Torah, his law, statutes, and commandments, and so forth and so on. Okay, so that is the twist. Uh, and you will find that this prophet will, will say at one point that if you don't really want to go, then you will not be allowed to go. You will perish with these uh, with this nation because retribution is almost here. In fact, uh, I, I do know uh, that, uh, and it has been said, you won't hear it on um, uh, uh, mainstream media because they are focusing on Trump and politics and all of that foolishness and it is distracting. And so they have no idea. If they do, they don't report on it. They have no idea what terrorists are planning. And I, ha I, I, I also have a list of 30 cities where they are already set up in. And so, uh, and so uh, you know, they're in just about every major metropolis. And so, uh, you know, they, they, they are ready to, to uh, set off whatever they're gonna do in every in all these all 30 of these cities now that's all the cities that we know but in all 30 of these cities simultaneously so everything's going to be happen happening at the same time so uh no matter how uh peaceful it looks now but things are going to happen my beloved family so we need we need to watch as well as pray and as yahusha said pray to the father that you are considered worthy to escape the things that are coming to the earth 
and to stand before the son of man. So we, we need to pray that, find that verse in the scriptures and pray that you are found worthy. Get your heart right. Make sure that you are, are, are repenting every day. Every time Abba shows you something that, uh, that uh, you need to print, repent of, then do that. Do that and, and uh, make sure that you are uh, breaking uh, any covenants that you made, Boy Scout, Girl Scout, uh, sororities, fraternities, uh, uh, Eastern Stars, uh, uh, what are the other ones? The Masons and all of these are, are, are uh, covenants that are made with the evil one. So make sure that your heart is clean, my beloved. Make sure and repent every day, draw closer and closer and closer. Now, there are some events that are going to occur before the Exodus. And there are several prophets that are prophesying the same thing. So, uh, and so I have already alerted you to harvest men and uh, Harvest Men is working and coordinating with um, uh, Disciple of Yah. He is a prophet. And so you can look at all of his videos and, and some of the things he said he's dream he had in a dream are the same things that, uh, that uh, this prophet is going to talk about. Okay, so now, the second exodus, the end of our captivity is near. So get ready and uh, be prepared. Okay, so I'm gonna play, uh, I'm gonna play this uh, video. And I'm just gonna play and 24 again, minutes. Uh -oh. these things. Her yeah. name is uh, uh, Maria and she is so prolific. And she is very thorough in her teaching. And I'm going to be putting this link because I'm not going to show you all of it, but I'm, I'm going to be putting this link and, uh, and two more of her teachings. And then you can just uh, subscribe to her channel maybe or find, go to her channel and find some more uh, educating uh, scholarly uh, teaching. That's what I love about her. So let's just go on. We're starting from the beginning. Brothers and sisters, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to Trumpet's Call. I'm Maria. I pray that you are holding on to faith, Amuna, and holding on to hope during these times. Thank you for joining me once again on the channel and for another session of our Sunrise Manna. In today's session of our Sunrise Manna, we're going to have a bit of a timeline review. There have been so many things happening in the world and there have been many lessons that have been being taught on this channel and on others. I felt compelled to kind of summarize the things that have been discussed just in brief. And these things are related to the coming events and the gathering of Yasharal back to our homeland. Okay, or at least back to the wilderness, which happens first. So I want to state right off the bat that I am no authority on any of these things. I will merely share with you what I believe in my heart the Father is revealing to me. And the responsibility is then yours to take these things before the Father and confirm or deny in his presence, okay? I will share because I do believe the Father's communicating to me. I feel like I've had enough evidence in my life to determine that he does speak. But I want to be careful about the word of the Most High. And I'm constantly looking for him to confirm his word to me. So if you all have confirmation of the things that will be discussed here today, please, by all means, drop it in the comment section. I appreciate reading those because it really helps me to know that I'm doing what the Father wants me to do. It really is encouraging. So thank you in advance for doing that. So without further ado, we're going to get started. We're going to begin where I believe we are right now in the timeline, which is we are at 
uh, prophetically speaking, when you look at the book of Revelation, I believe we're in a pause in between the sixth and the seventh seal, okay? And during this time, the father has been sealing his 144,000. These are his servants. These are the, the first fruit offering unto himself, who will be the bride of Mashiach. These are the priests. This is the bride. These are the overcomers. These are the sons. They are called by many names, but they are those whom the father has chosen at this hour to pour his power upon and leadership and power and might and they will be rewarded greatly due to their faithfulness unto the father and unto his son. So he's choosing those. He is sealing them for the mission ahead. They will minister on the earth during the times of the trumpet judgments. And as you know, the bowls are the trumpets that are being poured out. For those of you who haven't watched these revelation series that I've done on the trumpet, the bowls and the seals, you might want to check those out so you can understand what I'm referring to as I speak about these things. But long story short, the seals decree from the throne room of heaven. It's like the father writes a new law or statute or a declaration. And then it was opened by Messiah in the seal and released into the earth. And once it was released into the earth, it had to be announced. It had to be heralded. And so that's what the trumpets do. The trumpets announce the judgment and then the bowls or the vials pour them out. So the bowls manifest what has been heralded by the trumpets that has been decreed by the seals. So they all work together in unison. So we are, I believe, in that interstitial period, that pause between the sixth seal and the seventh seal. And so we are in a time of waiting. The father is doing what he will do to prepare those who will lead in the kingdom now during this time, okay? He's identified them and he is training them. And he is also training the 144,000 for their mission and their role once we return to the land, okay? So I believe the thing that catapults us from this place of waiting is an attack. There's going to be, um, I've got the word on the screen. I don't want to say it because I don't want to, flag this, get this video flagged. So there's going to be an I word from uh, Russia and China and all their allies. They will come from every conceivable side. It will be as if they're converging on this land and other lands and in Europe that they have deemed uh, their enemies, okay? So they will come and they will attack and they're already in place. The father says they're already in place. It's just yet to be revealed because they've already got their people in place. That's what the father revealed to me. Okay. So this will begin to happen. They'll begin to see um, missiles and bombs and, you know, ships, submarines, things of that nature happening in these places that have enslaved the Most High's people. And the Most High is bringing this against the nations. And then there's going to be, I believe, a halt or a pause in fighting for a period of time. I don't know how long the fighting will go on. It could be for a week. It could be for a month. It could be for two months. I don't know how long the fighting will go on, but it will go on for a period of time. And then there will be a halt due to the arrival of what the Father calls the destroyer. It's like a dark star that comes. And with it comes cataclysms and upheavals. It negatively affects our sun and causes it to flip its poles. It negatively affects the earth, causes, causing the earth to flip its poles. Magnetic north will become magnetic south and so on and so forth. Now, I'm going to stop her because last night I did run across a video that said that this occurrence was going to happen in about four days. And I looked and searched and searched and searched. But I could not find that video, and I don't know whether they took it down, uh, what what have you, not to alarm people, or they just wanted to keep things like that secret. But anyway, uh, maybe one, some of you can find it. But I believe what she's talking, because there's plenty of uh, uh, speculation in the world of science that this is going to happen. All right. Once again, I have discussed these things in recent videos, so you should know what I'm talking about if you're a regular viewer of the channel. 
So once this dark star arrives, this destroyer, the sun will go dark. And the sun goes dark due to the darkness of the star and due to the, the fallen that's attached and associated with this dark star. So the fallen will once again come to the earth and the fallen angels, I mean, and also the demonic elements that are attached to this quote unquote planet luminary as well. It's not a planet. It's a luminary. It's a heavenly body that's come and it comes to bring the judgment of the most high. It's being allowed to come to bring judgment. And when it does, the days will go dark. I call them the days of darkness. Some people call them three days of darkness. I have not been told three days. I have just been told days of darkness. So, and when you think about it, brothers and sisters, how do we really know if it's three days or not? How do we know? Days are determined by a sunrise and sunset. If there's no sun rising and no sun setting, how do you know whether a day has passed or not? So I think it's more appropriate just to say days of darkness because we can't measure the days. We can't measure the time, not according to the way the father tells us and instructs us to measure time by sunrise and sunset and things of that nature. Okay. So there'll be days of darkness and the demonic will walk the earth. It will be horrible. People will be possessed, oppressed, People will be destroyed. It will be bad. It'll be a horrible time. And the Father has instructed us to stay in our homes and shut the doors about us. Remain in prayerfulness and watchfulness and keep our wits about us. Keep our, our minds and our faces turned to the Father. Keep our hearts fixed on him and don't allow any wicked thoughts or any wicked intentions to enter because the enemy will try to enter our homes, not just by the front door, but through mind, through your mind, by trying to take over your thoughts. Okay. So you've really got to guard your thoughts during this time. You've got to take every thought captive. Okay. You and your children. So they need to be warned. Every thought needs to be taken captive. Okay. Take authority. And so during these days of darkness, the Father has revealed to us that healing gifts will be released during this time for those who are seeking his face. If you're seeking him during this time and really pouring out your heart before him and asking him to heal you and to make you over and to grant you the strength and the vitality you need to make the trip home, he will be faithful to do that, to do that during these times of darkness. In addition to that, he also told us that gifts will be poured out during this time. Gifts of not only healing and gifts of the word of wisdom, a word of knowledge, gifts that such as we will need in the kingdom, gifts such as we will need to, to traverse this world that will be essentially demonized. It will be so filled with wickedness that we will need the power and the manifest might of the Most High and His presence in us to overcome. And overcome we must. So this is what's going to be happening in the midst of the darkness. We will be growing toward the light of the Father, though we cannot see him. We'll be growing in the midst of the darkness. And then the sun resumes its light. It begins to shine again after days of darkness. We don't know how many days. After days of darkness, the sun resumes and the fighting resumes as well. The fighting continues on and the invading army continues to take down infrastructure, continues to do what it does as it invades and it takes over, it takes control, okay? So in the midst of this, at some point, the father is going to give them a word, the wink of an eye, a sign, an indication, a dream, a vision, a command, something. The Father is going to issue something and instruct these people who have come in to send his people home because they will know, they already know who we are, but they will know that if they harm us, the, the Most High's jewels, if they harm us in any way, they're going to have to answer for it. So I believe that when they come in, particularly the Russian leader is a type of Cyrus who will be used to the Most High to help facilitate the return of the Most High's people back to their land. The Father told... I just want to stop, and, and I, this is the last time, I just want to stop 
to uh, just to put, inject here that all a whole lot of paintings of the uh, of the uh, of Yahusha and his mother and uh, the disciples and some of the ones that were from the early assemblies uh, who were melanated are in Russia. It's, it's a lot of them. And so he has released some of these pictures. So just wanted you to know that. And this is the last time I'll, I'll interrupt. He said, they brought you here on ships. They're going to send you back on ships. This time, not cargo ships and the cargo hold. You're going to be sent home in luxury. Okay. So I believe this is what he's saying to us. We're going home on ships in luxury but we can't all go home on ships at the same time. There will be stages. There will be waves, just like we left Babylon in waves after the 70 years of captivity in Babylon. There will be waves of Exodus leaving the Americas and Europe and all the other places to which we've been scattered. It's going to be a major undertaking when you think about it, major, because there are a lot of us at the Father will choose to deliver and to return back to the homeland. And it's not going to be just a one trip and done. It's going to be multiple trips. We're going to have to dock ships and ports, disembark. We're going to have to have a place to be as we find a rally point where we can all rally together before we are taken into the wilderness. It's going to be a major endeavor, okay? And the Father will lay it upon the hearts of those he has chosen to facilitate this. And I do believe that those who are the invading armies will require that the nations that took us be the ones to facilitate this, be the ones to, to serve, be the ones to make sure that the resources are available to make this happen. And as we're leaving, we leave with resources. As we're leaving, people are giving into our bosom. The Gentiles who are going to be left behind, they're going to be giving into our bosom money, gold, silver, jewels in the same way as it happened with our ancestors in Egypt. This is what they'll be doing because they are desiring favor. They're desiring to be good to the most highest people because a major announcement will have gone out announcing that these people, the descendants of slaves are the actual people of the most high Yahuwah from the scriptures. The whole world will know and the whole world will want to get on our quote unquote good side. If you know what I mean. So when we leave, we leave with wealth. We leave with something in our hand, so to speak. Now, with regard to this, these trips that we're going to have to take in order to get home, I do believe it's got to be an organized event. We can't just all pile onto one ship and go home. It's not going to be like that. These cruise ships that the Father will have the nations provide for our need, they have to be embarked upon in an orderly fashion. It's got to be orderly. It's got to be organized. So in all likelihood, there are going to be tickets needed in order to embark upon these ships. If you think about it, an average ship holds anywhere from three to 5,000 people. One ship, even two ships, even 10 ships will likely not be enough to take us all back home. And so in order to make sure that we have enough ships for the number of people, it's got to be organized. So they're probably going to have to have us maybe fill out some documents or give a passport or a driver's license or something. And in my Ruach, I keep feeling this, that having the passport is going to be useful and beneficial in some way. So if you haven't done so and you feel it stirring in your Ruach to get one, you might want to go ahead and think about that. You know, it's your decision. You get to decide what you want to do, okay? So the wicked will be there at the ships as they're leaving, begging to get on in the same way that you had the wicked who did not heed the warning as Noah preached those 120 years before the floods came, before the waters began to pour out of the sky. They banged on the ship saying, let us in, let us in. They're going to be those who are near there at the docks where we're leaving, crying to go, to leave, because they're seeing that America is falling and other places and other nations are falling fast. They're going to want to go, okay? But they will not be allowed to go. Only those whom the Father has chosen, Hebrew and even some Gentiles, will be allowed to go. Those whom the Father has chosen. 
and he will see to it that those who he does not desire to go will not be allowed to go. Somehow they'll be rejected. The father will see to it. Okay. As I stated, there will be a massive transfer of wealth at this time. We will leave with riches. We will leave with wealth. We will leave with resources. Okay. And the resources that we'll need will come to us. The father will make sure that those come to us. Once we're entering into the land, we will get the things that we need to be able to survive, to be able to develop a new way of life. Because we're going to be leaving corporate America. We're going to be living a different way. We'll be living on the land, okay? And then we will see that there is major and massive destruction in the places to which we are leaving. There'll be war and famine and pestilences and plagues and terror. And the people who have enslaved us, they now will be enslaved. They will be enslaved to the beast system that's now arisen, okay? We will be taken to the continent of Africa, and we will rendezvous in a particular location. So we will be coming in likely on these ships, maybe docking at different ports within the continent, on the continent. There are ports in West Africa, there are ports where large ships can come in in East Africa, and there are many ports where big ships can come in in South Africa. South Africa may be the main port we come in at because it has, I believe, at least six ports down there that a, a large cruise ship could um, dock there. So be that as it may, we will come onto the continent and we will have a rendezvous point. The father will tell us where that is when it's time. And the angels, once we're all in place, will lead us into the wilderness. And there we will be judged by the father. He will plead with us face to face. He will cause us to pass under the rod and he will bring us into the bond of the covenant and he will rule over us. He will force us by the act of his will to do his will. Okay. We will once again be his children and we will be obedient children. And so once we're on the continent, we will be aided by other nations, nations on the continent, nations off the continent. People are going to be sending gifts they're going to be sending resources. They're going to be sending lumber and they're going to be sending cattle and oxen and chickens and maybe some eggs or whatever. They're going to be sending us all manner of riches because now the, the prodigal son has returned home and the father is seeing to it that the nations put a ring on their fingers, our fingers, and put a robe around our shoulders and treat us like the royalty that we have been. But the world has not seen us in that way but he's going to force them to acknowledge that we are his people. And so they will send gifts. They will send many things that we may need, tools and cattle and seeds and things of that nature. And the Father's orchestrating all of this from the heavenly realms. And then the trumpet judgments are sounding all over the world. Once we leave, we see that we are in that seventh seal. And with that seventh seal came the events that led to the darkness and all the other things that are happening on the earth at that time during the seventh seal. After the seventh seal comes the first trumpet. And I believe the first trumpet sounds once we are in the land. I don't believe it will start until we are firmly in the land and safe. Then the first trumpet begins to sound and then there are bowls being poured out and judgments upon the land. But the father has taken his children to a place of safety, okay? So the timeline, the father has given me indication that the event that I indicated as I began that will really kick off the start of all of these things, which is the encroachment, that's the word I'll use, the encroachment of these nations upon the United States and other places in the world that have held his people as slaves, the encroachment that is coming he says it's coming soon, okay? It's soon to come. It certainly should be before the end of the year. It says something fast. So the Father wants us to do what we can to prepare. Anything that he's been telling you to do, go ahead and get it done, please. Sure up your bug out bags, because when it's time to go, when these... Ships begin to be organized. We're going to have to move. 
And also, there is a strong indication in my Ruach that we will all be leaving from the East Coast. So if you're on the West Coast, you may be asked to make your way to the East Coast. And that may take some effort, okay? In the dream slash vision that I had, we were taken off the continent of North America and taken to the continent by a tsunami wave. And to me, this is an indication that as soon as we're gone, there will be a massive tsunami after we're gone. But we were all standing on the East Coast waiting. We were all congregated, Hebrews, just waiting, standing on the coast. And we saw this massive tsunami wave coming toward us. And we were worried, I think, for a minute, you're thinking, okay, here's a tsunami. We're standing right here on the coast. And it proceeded to bow. It picked us up, the, the, the tsunami wave now. It picked us up on itself and deposited us very gently. It very gently deposited us on the coast. It was West Africa where it deposited us. And then it turned around, it changed directions and came back and slammed into the United States, the East Coast of the United States. And so the father is letting us know that he's going to get us out before he really brings his judgment that began with that first trumpet blast. So I believe we're all going to be out by that time. Even though the gathering is going to be a process, it's going to be wave after wave of people getting on ships and being delivered and the ships going back and getting more people and getting more people until we're all delivered safely. And then we rendezvous with the angels in a place that he's going to take us. So during this time, when the bowls are being poured out and the trumpets are blasting, 144,000 are going to be ministering. They may be all over the earth. They may be all over the world, teaching and preaching and helping those who are still asleep to become awakened. They're going to be ministering. They're going to be serving. They're going to be leading. They're going to be doing what the Father is calling them to do at that time. So at some point, the Father will allow us, those who survive the wilderness experience, to leave the wilderness. At some point, he will allow us to go back to our land, our homeland. He will open the door for us to leave and to enter in to our land once again. Hallelujah. And once we do, we return once again with major resources, wealth. And we have much wealth now that we've been able to build and learn how to you know, raise cattle and learn how to grow crops and learn how to survive. Because remember, in the rest of the world, they're struggling. They have famine. They don't have clean water. They don't have resources. So after a period of time of living back in our land in peace and safety, the father's going to put a hook in the jaw of Magog, Gog, who is the chief prince of the land of Magog, and they're going to come to take spoil. They want the water, they want the riches, they want the wealth, they want the chickens, they want the eggs, they want the cattle, they want everything we have. They want. Okay, that is all that I'm gonna show you, but I wanted to, I, I really wanted to, um, uh, show you this because there had there are so many videos out there about three days of darkness and um uh she explains it very very well because there yah is going to send some of the 144,000 to uh try to awaken those people that are in our family or our neighbors or uh, what have have you who are still asleep and if that like she said if they don't want to go then they will not be allowed on the ship so i want i i, I strongly uh suggest that you uh see the this video in its entirety it's about a 50 minute video i believe and uh and then she has two others that explains the things that will happen um the uh the signs uh before the first exodus the the um the war and then the days of darkness and then comes the exodus so hopefully you are getting your things packed. We don't know when it will be. She did mention it. It may be during this year. 
Um, and uh, hopefully you are staying away from the pagan holidays and all of that. Uh, and that you are ready. We are packing our uh, backpacks and suitcases and trying to th take as, as many clothes that we think we will need. And, um, and so that's, uh, that's what we are doing. And we want to be ready when it's time to go that we won't have to try to pack anything or go get anything because we don't want to miss out on when the ship sails. So uh, so this is informative to you. So just uh, listen to the rest of it or listen to it in its entirety again and pray about it, pray about it. And uh, like I said, and she is saying, our hearts have to be right with Yah. And I know um, with the harvest men, I remember hearing her say that the most high is not going to put up with a whole lot of murmuring and complaining during this the exodus. So we really have to get our hearts in a submissive uh, mode to Yah in a mode of worship and love and adoration to him because he is saving us. That is the definition of salvation. He's saving us from destruction, from the destruction that is going to occur here in this nation and in all the other nations that have mistreated his chosen people. Hallelujah. So Father, we thank you for your love. Again, we just thank you that you are preparing us. Father, I just pray that everyone who hears will uh, take action, take steps to get themselves prepared. In the name of Yahusha, we thank you that you are finally gathering us. Uh, it's within our sight that you are gathering us as you promised the prophets from the four corners of the earth and that you would return us. And we realize that we're going into the wilderness first, but then after we pass under the rod, uh, you will, those who uh, meet your standards, that we thank you, Father, that you're going to uh, uh, guide us back into the land of our fathers, Abraham, Yisha, and Yaakov. You're so good. You're so gracious. You are so compassionate and you are slow to anger, but rich in mercy and great in faithfulness. So we thank you and we love you. Hallelujah. And now may Yahuwah bless you and keep you. Make his face to shine upon you. Be gracious unto you and lift up his countenance upon you and give you his shalom. So if we are not out of here by next week, it's supposed to, uh, it's supposed to happen on a feast day. But uh, anyway, the, the feast that the pagans do is Thanksgiving and Christmas. So it, so if we are, if things have started uh, happening and going down, then uh, this will be the last, uh, my last uh, uh, teaching video. And, uh, and I will see you over in the homeland. But in just in case it's a little longer, we don't know when. If it's a little longer, then I will post things and post some teaching. But I, I encourage you, my beloved family, to get in your uh, Bible and immerse yourself in your Torah. Immerse yourself in his word and just let it just saturate in you. And fall deeper and deeper in love with a wonderful, awesome, majestic, marvelous, excellent Yahuwah. Hallelujah. All right. When this is it. And shalom, shalom to you. And I am.